What is up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the first episode of The Bunker. This is a game that I've been watching with much intensity. This is one that I've been very, very excited about because it kind of reminds me of old games from back in the day. Uh, things like Critical Path, for example, where when, when CDs first came out, games didn't really have the ability to do full motion stuff prior to CDs. Whereas when CDs first came out and you started having CD-ROM drives on PCs, this is when I was probably, oh, 11 or 12 years old, that's when you first started to get like real full motion videos in games and they started doing all kinds of weird theatrical stuff and trying to figure out what they could do along the edges and borders of a game. The Bunker reminds me of that time period. In essence, you're a guy who's down inside of a bunker and there's only one rule, you're like not allowed to go down to the lower level of the bunker. It uses, actually, I'm pretty sure the entire game is full motion video, but it's kind of a point and click game at the same time from what I've seen. But aside from that, I haven't been following it too intently because I didn't want to spoil it for myself on accident. You know how it goes when you're like looking at forums and getting too excited about things. Spoilers happen to happen. So, let's play the game and check it out, shall we? I need to breathe. Yeah, I'm getting pretty hyped right now. Not gonna lie, that was pretty legit. Probably be interesting for a case study, see that affects people being down inside of like a little hole for, you know, 30 years straight. It's not a natural environment for human beings, we tend to fold. Routine, I'll be safe. As long as I'll I always be here. Stay in our rooms, I'll be safe. As long as I don't go outside, I'll be safe. That's it. Good boy. 
<laughs> what did I miss it? We did time, Mum. Yes. Well, we got Treasure Island, we've got Domestic Nuclear Shelters Technical Guidance Manual. Oh, we got the good book, I suppose. Ah, as soon as she's about to make her exit. Maybe we lean this one on Jesus for a little while, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, it's been a little. Yeah, experienced in many things. Multiple problems. He had not been tried. Mum? Um. I love you, Joe. I'll be here. I keep you safe, I promise. No. 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 Shit. All right, so the routine. We go to medical, vitamins and the dosimeter. And then we have the radio, we do the radiation check. We get food and then number 5 is I assume we dispose of the corpse. Uh, in an environment like this, you probably want to take care of that. So we'll start with medical vitamins. Oh, cool. So we can click on just about anything over here. Mum said I have to keep my vitamin B levels up. Okay. That's kind of interesting, though, how they got the actual video overlaid, like he's doing his thing over here. This is something that I haven't seen in video games, like, ever. And it's kind of a cool concept to play around with, making, like, interactive films, essentially. And I know Telltale's been doing it a lot, but seeing it with live-action actors and everything is actually a very different experience indeed. Like I said, I haven't seen anything like it since probably Critical Path is, like, one of the only games I can think of that had, like, full-motion videos where you would click stuff while the video was happening and things would happen. Or for stuff like Mad Dog McCree. Stuff like that, I guess. But those were shooters. Pills here. Alright, let's, let's track down some vitamin B. That looks like an EpiPen right there. I can't really tell, though. It's kind of off the screen slightly. Is there something I can hold down to see what's clickable? Is that possible? What is this? I wonder if my radiation level is safe. Oh, maybe that's the dosimeter, possibly. Radiation is just over 70 mR. That's acceptable. Okay, so those two things have been taken care of. I actually, I'm a little infatuated with this game right now. I like this. We'll see how it goes as time goes along. It seems like there's a tiny bit of voice desync in some of the FMVs, but I don't know what that's caused by. I'm not entirely sure. We'll go ahead and we'll do the radio thing next. I wonder if anyone is out there. Sounds 
someone has to be out there. Nothing so far. Nothing on the radio, I guess. I mean, if there was a full-on nuclear war, this is kind of an interesting situation to consider. Uh, I think that's probably why the popularity of post-apocalyptic games is so high and has been for a very, very long time. It's just because it's a... Interesting to think to work. I think most of us live in cities or in areas where there's people just like everywhere. And while people do live in rural areas, you know, it's weird to think about what the world would be like if all of a sudden all this space was just cleared out and there was nobody, you know, rubbing your elbows on the subway. Next up, it appears as though we've got to do our radiation check, and I'm assuming that's going to be an interior radiation check, because we already used the dosimeter on ourselves. That's kind of interesting that you look through the tube, and that's how it determines what your radiation level is. I have no idea how that all functions. That is not something that I've had any experience with in my life. But I guess you look inside of a tube and it tells you what your radiation levels are. My guess is that maybe radiation has some passive effect on your vision or something like that. And make it like more difficult to focus on the part of the graph or whatever it was that display. I I'm not really entirely sure. I have no clue. That scene with his mom was rough, man. I, I guess it kind of depends if you've been there before. I think that's kind of the fundamental experience that makes you an adult is once you like start losing people. And I don't know, learning to let go. That great biological experience that everybody's got to go at some point. And just like learning to deal with that is rough, but you don't like to see anybody else go through it either. Especially given this situation where we're like the last person in the bunker. I can only imagine that kind of encroaching feeling of loneliness and depression that was set in. Bunker radiation is normal. Good. Check that off the list. You know, I'm trying to memorize this process because I don't know if later on in the game we're not going to have access to the routine and we're just going to have to, like, figure it out on our own. Let's go with food next. I need to choose my food first. Okay, so it looks like we've got a latrine with 30-year-old toilet paper, which is actually kind of surprising that held together, but I guess, hey, the miracles of science... We got food around, crates and crates and crates of it, so that's a plus. It's a little bit disheveled in here, or is it just me? You'd figure we'd have better storage space for all this. I don't know. Oh, look at that. We've got the uh, signature English double taps over here. I've never actually seen them before. I had heard people talk about it. Me and Avic have a running. We rib each other pretty hard about the tap. <laughs> we have the hot tap and the cold tap versus in the United States where it's just all cups through one tap. He and I rib on each other all the time about it. But I've never actually seen one, so there it is. Hooray, my life horizons are expanding. Peas and carrots, I suppose. So that makes 27 years. Three months and 14 days of food left. Dude, don't eat while you're shitting. That's unsanitary, bro. Maybe the food's that bad, though. The second it hits your mouth, it's just straight out the other end. Like a booty butt jetpack. <laughs> It hasn't been in the can for 30 years, man. Who knows? And then the troublesome business of dealing with mother. No, oh, dude, tell me you didn't just leave her there. It looks like there's a skull underneath there. How long has it been? Oh, dude, you gotta handle that. That's a disease. Oh, that's disgusting. That's brutal. You gotta. Uh, maybe they don't have a way to dispose of corpses, though. I don't know. She liked it when I read to her. Tell me we're not about to read to a dead lady. 
Treasure Island's one of my favorite. The dreary mornings were before us, but there were no sign of any wind, and the boats had gone out and manned, and the ship wrapped three or four miles around the corner of the island and up around the narrow passages to the haven behind Skeleton Island. I volunteered for one of the boats where I had. I mean, it's sad in a number of ways, but uh, you gotta you gotta deal with that situation just for sanitation reasons. I assume that since they got a boiler, they got some place that they can dispose of the body. But I don't know. Growing up underground like that, we don't know when everybody else in the bunker disappeared. Oh, he does it on its own this time. I mean, if he's only been in there with his mom for years and years and years and years. The possibility stands that he's probably not socially well adjusted enough to know that he needs to take care of business. Radiation is nearly ATMR. It's increasing. That's not a good sign. Well, humans are curious like that. I'm not completely sure that I trust that. Because obviously our radiation level, I mean, maybe it's the food that's contaminated? Twenty-seven years, three months, and thirteen days left. We had a dreary morning's work before us, but there were no sign of any wind, and the boats had gone out and manned, and the ship wrapped three or four miles around the corner of the island and up around the narrow passages to the haven behind Skeleton Island. I volunteered for one of the boats, wherever I had. One, 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 one. It was a binary day. So we're just back on this schedule, huh? All right. One thing at a time. Something's going to happen, though. Presuming our radiation is going to continue to rise until it's no longer inside acceptable bounds. Yeah, it looks higher already. Radiation is... Over 80 MR. Sounded like he almost had something there for a second. I heard it on the back end of the scan. Yeah, that'd be a pretty frosty shiver that that would send up your spine. Definitely one of those, like, FML moments. I need to find that manual. The hell are those? This has never happened before. So we just... The procedural manual. Where is it? Let's see. Follow procedural manual 23671. No. 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 Okay, so we'll go back. Let's check the drawers very quickly. 
my old diary. Today it is my birthday and I have had extra peaches, my favourite, and there was a candle. Mum gave me this book and some pens. Look, here are the colours. Vera sang me a ring a ring of roses. She said she was crying because she is happy. It's my birthday. And then she and PJ and Louie and Mum sang me happy birthday, but not too loud. I blew out the candle. This book is going to be my book about my friends. Today I will start a new friend. He will look like this. He will be a soldier because I have a general, but I need a bigger army. I've got a block from the map room, but I had to hide. Mr. Bishop was there. He nearly saw me. He was shouting. He says I am a waste. I think he is a waste. I will make the soldier and Mr. Churchill and Joan of Arc will tell him to fight Mr. Bishop. We had ham today. It is sort of pink and sticky. It is better than sardines, which are the worst. Mum has made my knife sharper so I can finish off doing my soldier. She says Rocky was the best at winning fights. So that's his name. I finished Rocky, so here are all my friends. My underwear drawer. There we go. That looks like a technical manual. <laughs> that was me every day at my IT job. Just like, Aah! I have no idea what I'm doing. Working in IT is essentially a job where it depends on how good you are at looking stuff up. All right, in the event of server failure, make an announcement that mains power is being shut down for maintenance. Find the fuse box located in storage room level 2 and identify the damaged fuses. Locate the replacement fuses. Shut off main power, wait 10 seconds, put in fuses, put the main back on, do system check. So, fuse box is on level 2. We take out the damaged fuses. We get the replacement fuses, kill the power, put fuses in, turn power back on. Okay. Done. Find the fuse box level 2. Find the fuse box level two. Wait, I've got a toy collection? Mum. My favorite toy I made took ages to make the arms. It's inside of here, maybe a flashlight or something along those lines. Just my locker. Okay. I was hoping maybe we'd have some kind of like I need to find the fuse box on level two. Alright, so let's find the stairwell. Come on, buddy, I believe in you. You've got this. You can open a door. It's locked. Where's the key? Okay, so apparently that's no longer an option. I am going to stop the episode here. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me at the Nerdcast for the next episode. The first episode, coincidentally, of The Bunker, which I am enjoying a lot. This is an easy series, too, because the game does all the storytelling for me. And so I was like, ah, well, you know. Sometimes you gotta take a load off. I'll see y'all next time. Bye, everybody.